whenever we see anybody get in trouble, for whatever the reason is, you see them on the news, you have these sensational stories, it always seems to be this person was affected in their childhood, and now that's the reason that they bugging out 30 years later. Yeah. How is that a cop out or is that real? How much does childhood trauma really affect the way all of us act in our present day situation? Tremendously, man. Um, there are so many models on child development, particularly these two guys uh, named Piaget and Vukotsky. I'm trying not to nerd out on y'all right now, but they made some developmental models. Uh, there are hundreds of them that exist in terms of childhood and, and like what that looks like and what those stages of development are. And sometimes if you're missing a piece from one stage, you don't fully graduate to the next stage. So that's like having a loving and responding and warm parent. That's having a, a, a supportive household and domestic environment. Like you, trauma is... I think we look at trauma as like this one particular thing that can happen or this big event, but trauma can be a grain of sand. Um, for instance, my personal trauma, I've never seen my mom date before. Never seen her go on a date, never seen her with nobody, none of that. And when I became a young man, dating was such a weird concept for me. Now it's arguable that that's not trauma because you know, it, with the definition of trauma can, can, it can vary depending on who you ask and how that person shows up in the world, but early childhood trauma has been scientifically proven to, to tremendously impact people's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors throughout the rest of their lives. Most of the things we do now are residue from coping skills and social behaviors that we learned in childhood. You know, the world tacks that away. You learn you can't respond what from, from a negative reaction. You, you test the world around you, and when you get pop pop, you, you augment the way you do it a little different, you know? So we're just, we're, we're big babies walking around with that mindset, man, who just kind of got thrusted into adulthood over the years. Um, yeah, early childhood trauma is real. I don't know, I can't say it's a cop out because you don't know, it's a difference between what affects someone mentally and the actions that they, subsequently take in the punishment that they'll have to face or the consequences that they'll have to face, that's a sliding scale is tricky, man. We see it all the time. But mental health has been the source of a lot of barriers for people in our society, particularly black people. The institutions set in place don't really support it in a way um, that's conducive to long life and health. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a murky water. I wouldn't say it's a cop out, but it's definitely a contributing reason, man, absolutely. Absolutely. So if you've been dealing with so much of this since since childhood, can you give any advice to, to all of us? Like, how do we go about breaking toxic patterns, patterns that are constantly setting us back, constantly that um, patterns that are constantly getting us in trouble? Like, how, how do we, number one, identify these patterns and number two, go about breaking toxic patterns? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you already said it, man. One of the best ways to break a pattern is to shine like the brightest light you can find, the brightest light of awareness, shine it on that joint. Don't run from it. Don't leave it. You know, every time I get into an argument, I punch a hole in the wall. Don't run from that. Don't run from that. Sit with that. That's the uncomfortable. That goes back to the uncomfortable feeling because then you have to kind of figure out, well, why do I do that? And that's almost guaranteed to be tied to a very painful childhood memory. Wow. Or a childhood experience almost every time, man. So it's, you, you have to be aware of what you're doing away from the shame and guilt that you feel from doing it. And second, you have to recruit people. You have to know your limitations. I know I alone can't fix this issue with me. I have to bring in people to help. Who can help me feel accountable? Who can help me be responsible? Is there a larger issue? Am I taking care of all my medical needs? Am I taking care of all my dietary needs? I always say, like, you want to be uh, an observer of your emotions and not a passenger prisoner of them. You want to be able to look at them and be curious about them. Like, oh, I'm feeling this again. They go that feeling again. They go that thought again. I know where that come from. You right there. I'm touching you. You right there. You can't hide from me. I know it's there. I'm going to address it. I don't run from it. You know what I'm saying? That 
the second part of that is when you recruit the team and you hear things about yourself that you don't like, you, you have to you have to know that the acceptance of that is going to be the first step toward not doing that again. And you can't fix what you're not conscientious of and you can't overcome what you can't overcome alone. Wow. Wow. OK. Are there any are there any signs um, that we should all look for within ourselves to to identify that maybe my mental health is getting worse? Like like I'm on a decline. We all got stressful lives out here. All every one of us. Absolutely. We're worried about bills. We worried about our job. The pandemic is driving us crazy. You know, we've been quarantined for over a year now. Like, like are there any things you, you talked about putting a mirror in front of yourself. If Sean was to put a mirror in front of himself right now, what are the signs that I should be looking for that might indicate my mental health? It, it, it's on the decline. Yeah, um, I'm a huge fan of writing and journals. Um, because they allow you to go back and really get an accurate snapshot of where you were at the time. You can smile in the picture and look happy as hell, and it doesn't really spell where your mind was in 2018. You might not remember. So just having reference and tracking the way that you feel, even if you use something called a mood calendar they have now, where every day you just press a button, this is how I feel, this is how I feel. And if you can have a track record of your happiness or your overall state of wellness getting uh, dropping over the course of time, I think that's a sign. Now, if it's not well documented, you live in life, you paying bills, you feeding babies, you keeping your significant other happy, you're not going to be able to track all that. Like that ain't, that's not going to happen. Um, I think one thing you can do is listen to the people around you when they say that there have been changes in your behavior and not just anybody, because people always got something to say, but people that you know, and love and trust and people that you know will give you honest opinions. I think that if you sit down with yourself, um, a lot of times we don't just sit down in a quiet space for five minutes, not distracted by phone or music or no. podcast, just with your thoughts and really think about where you are in your own mind and your own space right now. And if you can do that, and if you even have the smallest inkling, in, I mean, I'm talking a kernel of right size inkling in, that something's off or not right or not like it used to be or not how you would ideally like it to be. I I think that is a great indication. It's really easy to say, nah, that's all right. Oh, it's just a phase. It's just a phase. But if you, it's just a phase it long enough, your brain will rewire itself to think that that is your new normal and you won't feel like anything is off anymore. So uh, just being really conscientious of what's going on with you, um, asking around, ask friends for honest opinions, uh, go back and, and take a hard look at where you were a year prior compared to where you are now. I think those are really good starting points. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.